Hi, my name is Joe. Welcome to another Cointelegraph interview. I'm here today with Ava, the Vice President of the European Parliament. Ava, how are you doing? Good, thank you for having me. I, I follow your work and I'm happy to meet you. Oh, that's very kind of you. And I hear that you're a Bitcoiner from as early back as 2015. Is that right? Yeah, 2015, it was for me um, an opportunity to explore solutions okay. for the failures we had in the banking system. I'm coming from Greece. Yep. So the old system didn't work very well. Uh, we had a huge austerity and the banks took over basically our savings. Um, you saw what happened with Cyprus. So then I explored like new, new possibilities. I saw blockchain as an opportunity. Okay, excellent. So is it safe to say that there is a Bitcoiner in the European Parliament? Well, I would say I talk about more of the technology. Okay. Um, so I prefer to talk about um, the amazing possibilities that you can have okay. and then the use case is a different thing you can like some you don't have to like everything uh, but technology is not good or bad so I like the technology and mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we can get the best out of it okay um, also with Bitcoin it depends how you use it okay how you use it what yeah. do you mean by that I mean, uh, when you see cases of um, people trying to manipulate the market or like trading, this is thing, these are things that um, they're not, um, for me, I think the best pos potential of blockchain is when you actually create value, you can have like real projects and um, you can basically give more opportunities to citizens. Bitcoin I liked because it offered this, um, it, I think it's the most decentralized project mm -hmm. on blockchain and I like the philosophy around that. Um, so to give more options to citizens of how they want um, the financial system basically to be. So it was a great example for that. Very good, okay. And so I'm gonna quote you here, but I think last year in a magazine piece for Cointelegraph, you mentioned that blockchain in general, everybody is positive. When it comes to currencies, everybody is skeptical. Um, would you be able to provide us with an update on this, perhaps shed some more light on whether currencies people are still skeptical? Yeah, they are because um, so trying to regulate now with the crypto assets file, um, we talk about the um, e-money or asset tokens, we try to regulate that, but DeFi um, is something that we cannot get into and ensure that customers, users will be protected. Okay. Um, so this is what I mean. And then you have this like Terra Luna thing and then you say, okay, so I need to have some safeguards okay. to ensure that also the financial system will um, function ac accordingly to the expectations of the citizens. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is my work, huh? it's yeah. not that. <laughs> I like how you just sort of skirt around the Terra Luna thing, you know, 50 billion wiped out in a, a yeah, but days. I mean, this is not under the scope of what we're regulating now. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say like citizens need to be able to have these options. So we tell them like um, this is safe because it's regulated and this is in the unregulated okay. um, uh, era of, uh, of blockchain. So okay. this is at least something we need to try to do. Yeah. But we also I have called to um, explore some possibilities of um, also deciding exactly to define what's DeFi yeah. um, and also see how we can put some safeguards there so at least market manipulation will not be possible because failure you will have offline and online always. Okay, could we, what's DeFi in your words? What's your idea of what DeFi is? Well, I would say it's like completely decentralized. This means that nobody can control or like really manipulate um, okay. a, a blockchain. Um, it's not easy. Okay. to happen um, because most of them they're like saying they are but they are not so we need to have like safeguards to understand who is the developer who controls that what are the keys if somebody can um, can change the code or not um, where is the jurisdiction mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. to make sure we understand how it works um, and this is not something like it's not an easy exercise but I mean, this is what disruption is. It's, it's out of the box challenges that we need to see what are the benefits okay. and ensure we, um, we work to, around that with smart regulation. Okay, smart regulation. So that's when the European Parliament or the EU steps in and maybe gives a stamp of approval or perhaps rejects these projects? 
Yeah, but again, it's not about the technology, it's about the applications. Okay. So yeah. how you use that. Um, because if you use it like for a voting system, maybe it's amazing. Okay. Uh, but if uh, somebody prepared that and it has like vulnerabilities, you have crashes of the systems. Okay. And so is that something that we might see in the next sort of two to five years, a, a blockchain voting system within the European Parliament? Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to test some uh, possibilities, yes. Okay, oh, tell us more. <laughs> so I'm trying like to, to test how we can use the system to make sure that it's trustworthy because mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's really important to ensure that our democracy would not have failures of technological systems okay. um, and in the infrastructure. Um, so this is like an effort that we, it takes time. But um, once we have that, we can start like using it because we all uh, went through this lockdown yep. and the pandemic accelerated the need to use these technologies mm -hmm. to, to vote, to discuss, to meet online, to be educated online, like to have workshops. So yep. I think we have to get there um, sooner uh, rather than later. Absolutely. Okay. And I mean, here we are at the WEF in lovely Davos, where it's a little bit windy, I do admit. Nice. But um, we're talking about blockchain, we're talking about decentralization, we're talking about distributed ledger technologies. And here you are talking about voting on a blockchain within a European Parliament. How have you seen this sort of sea change towards crypto or warming up towards blockchain technologies? How have you seen that develop in the uh, recent years? Well, um before the pandemic, uh, we were all excited about the potential of the technology. Okay. Uh, what we are seeing now, it's a technology that's more mature. We can understand the scalability. We can understand where interoperability problems secure uh, privacy issues. So we can understand a bit better the technology. Um, we still don't have like super successful applications, but mm -hmm. um, everybody's like ready to again um, test the, um, the technology into real applications and to realize uh, some of the promises. I think the problem with blockchain was that we over promised everything, like all <laughs> solutions about all the problems. So we yeah. were looking for problems. And I think we have to look for solutions. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very important thing you've just said there. That, yeah, blockchain does sometimes <laughs> overstretch itself. No? Yeah, maybe a bit. Okay. And what about currencies? I know we touched on it a little bit at the start yeah. of this discussion, but um, you know, there's a lot of discussion about a central bank digital currency, a CBDC, yeah. maybe even the digitization of a euro. And what are you seeing from your viewpoint? Well, I have called for uh, a digital euro as an alternative, as an option. It can remove a lot of uh, costs yeah. and intermediation. It could allow control of your uh, savings, of your money. Um, so I think uh, uh, the central bank, the European one, is already testing it. They are trying to develop one that can be really useful. Mm -hmm. um, but again, um, it, it, need, it needs time. It accelerated when the Libra came out. Yeah. So everybody said like, okay, we, we need to compete. We need to be there. We need to have an option of a digital euro. Um, but um, I think that we still need time. I, I'm not ready to say that we're going to experience it anytime soon. Okay. Uh, but for sure it's there. So when you see how the financial system is um, adopting it, then you will see the governments, they will be ready for it with a better understanding than some years ago when they were just monitoring it. Okay, okay. And in, in light of the rapid growth in stable coins in terms of you know market cap and obviously the, most of them are back to the dollar, um, is there a risk there that the dollar sort of eats up a lot of the market share of the money in the system currently? I'm not sure I'm quite fair that question the way I want it to, but is there a risk that the euro in say a 5, 10 or 20 year time scale it's a much smaller sort of global weighting against the dollar. Well, I'm not sure because um, we already use dollar for most of the transactions in global mm -hmm. trade. Um, but I would definitely say that Europe cannot be left behind. Okay. We need to do more. We need to develop the digital euro. We need to be there uh, ready to provide options. Yep. Um, and I think this would be the safest way to go, to give options to citizens and not to uh, have one global currency mm -hmm. uh, because of the different um, also geopolitical um, uh, vulnerabilities, I would say. So we need to ensure that we have that. Mm -hmm. um, but then if something is better, uh, I cannot predict now what's going to happen next. What I can tell you is we're going to be there yep. to see innovation you know, happening and yep. to make sure that it's good for citizens in the end. This is, this is my role.
Okay, okay. And of course, you come from a real position of passion here. I can feel the enthusiasm towards blockchain. And obviously, being Greek, you've seen how mistrust in the banks can lead to consequences, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, what are you most excited about, about the blockchain or the crypto space becoming more mainstream? For me already, um, the target is achieved. So the moment we start talk, talking about decentralized solutions and blockchain, mm -hmm. we saw um, a reduction of the hidden fees okay. in its transaction. We saw immediately easier cross-border payments and cheaper. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh, more online banking yeah. happening and we've seen banks using blockchain um, for, for their own uh, um, activities. So. I see that it's happening, it's changing already things okay. because it's there as yeah. a new technology. So emerging technologies, they, they manage to um, basically to disrupt in a mm -hmm. positive manner, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> a lovely note to finish on. Thank you so much, Eva. Thank you for having me.